Today I have great pleasure in talking with the awarded Australian poet Anne M. Carson. Um, we're going to be talking about her manuscript, Massaging Himmler, a poetic biography of Dr. Felix Kirsten. We're also going to be talking about forthcoming performances that will include excerpts from this work alongside the full set of 10 preludes of Ratmaninoff's Opus 23. So Anne, please tell us how you came about finding this, this work and the whole fascination that involved you in, in writing this new manuscript. It was one of those uh, serendipitous occasions. I was training to be a masseur at the time and thought that that might be my life work. And I found a tattered book in an op shop, in a sale bin in an op shop for two dollars. And um, that book told a remarkable story about a masseur. And it was the story of Felix Kirsten, Dr. Felix Kirsten. And he became the masseur of Heinrich Himmler who, as we know, was the second income of the Nazi party during the Second World War. And he was the only person, because of his unique skills, he was the only person who was able to relieve Himmler momentarily from his crippling stomach cramps. So he became very valuable to Himmler and um, in the course of almost daily treatments for the whole course of the war, Kirsten was able to learn the fault lines of Himmler's personality and use that to release prisoners. And he started out very small, just single people, and that grew into tens, hundreds of people until by the end of the war he had been responsible for the release of many thousands, tens of thousands, even some say hundreds of thousands of people. So it's a remarkable story. And he, because of his close association to the Nazi party and particularly the high ranking Nazis, he was sort of buried, his name was buried at the end of the war because he was accused of collaboration. But there was a inquiry that actually cleared his name of all the charges that had been made against him. And the inquiry said that yes, he had exaggerated perhaps in places about his influence, but basically all his claims were proven. Um, and they were significant claims of releasing many, many hundreds of thousands of European people from concentration camps and from Nazi custody. They're remarkable numbers, Anne. And he managed to do this all by himself? It is remarkable, and I guess we'll never know exactly how many people um, he helped release. He did start out, out solo, he did it totally by himself, just in his relationship with Himmler, and it was people that he knew personally. But as he progressed, he did um, secure the release. He became known as someone who could do that, and he was approached by many different people. And as the war progressed and things became more dire, he did collaborate with sometimes organisations like the Red Cross and um, other people within the Nazi party. He had cooperation from Himmler's secretary and also um, Walter Schellenberg. I think in the forthcoming performance, you've married these excerpts from your manuscript together with some of Ratmaninoff's preludes. How did you come about to find they go together? Julian Bailey is in us who's playing those pieces and we were talking of a collaboration. How might we combine my poetic um, works with his piano pieces? And these are one of his signature pieces, which he's been playing for some of the pieces, some of the preludes in, in this sequence, he's been playing for over 40 years. Um, and I've been working on my manuscript for 20 years, so there's a lovely sort of symmetry there. But we were talking of collaboration and what we might do together and I tried to write a sequence of poems to these Rachmaninoff preludes and I couldn't quite come up with something gutsy enough because these pieces are incredibly large pieces. Um, they cover the whole emotional spectrum um, including the most sublime lyrical passages with pieces of incredible drama and, um, and pathos. And eventually I was looking around for, okay, what's a story that's big enough to be held by these pieces of music? And then I realised 
that my manuscript, this story of Felix Kirsten and Heinrich Himmler, was such a story. It had the requisite drama and pathos um, to match the Rachmaninoff pieces. And then we discovered actually that Rachmaninoff himself had been fiercely in defence of Jewish people. He had actually resigned from an orchestra because they had been anti-Semitic. So we felt there was a lovely correspondence there. We are crammed onto trains without food or drink, frozen beneath our rags. At journey's end, desperate for release, we expect death in any guise. Bullet, rope, dog, club, typhus, starvation, gas. Instead, after crossing the frontier, when the cattle truck train doors are finally opened, Light floods in, dazing us. It takes our eyes an eon to adjust. We're very excited. We're having two performances to bring these two works to the public. Um, the poems are going to be read by George Kozlowski. Um, who brings a beautiful bass baritone voice to the performance and Julian playing the piano at Queen's College at Melbourne Uni. And um, they're going to be on Saturday and Sunday, the 23rd and 24th of July at 5 p.m. The tickets will be available both from Julian and myself and on the door. There'll be a bar open at 4.45 and the performance will be an hour and a half with a break in the middle. It's early enough that you can go out for dinner afterwards, so it makes a, we hope, a lovely evening for people. We look forward to it very much, Anne, and thank you so much for joining us today. Best of luck with your new manuscript. Thanks so much for listening.